Hey guys, this is Shreyas and welcome back to another video. So it's been a while since I made a video and I hope everyone is staying safe and is okay. But yeah, today I am back with another laptop video. So today I'm gonna review this HP NV X360 laptop. And this is the Ryzen version. This has the Ryzen 4500U. So yeah, with that, let's get into the review. And I want to cover a small bit about laptops in general right now in India and what you should do as a consumer. So this is Shreyas and let's tech that out. Alright, as I mentioned in the intro of the video, the laptop landscape and any PC or phone landscape in India currently is kind of tough because we have a worldwide chip shortage because of which a lot of manufacturers are struggling to provide the key components for your devices like the CPUs and the GPUs of your laptops or any other desktop grade uh, parts etc. Now this has also led to retailers marking up their prices and charging a premium at times. What I have noticed usually is that the price fluctuation is there especially on Amazon sometimes but some laptops actually held their price really well whereas others went unavailable. So that's something you should keep in mind. Don't pay an extra but I'm telling you uh, given the current situation and what I foresee it will take a long time for things to fall back into place. So even though this is the 4500U in this particular laptop, the 5000 series hitting in the Indian market will take some time. There are a couple of models I see available, but yeah, I don't know how long or if the price is justified for those or not as there are no other reviews that I could find. So with that, let's get started with this particular laptop. Let's start with the design and build quality then. All right, so this is a 13 inch laptop, 13.3 inches precisely if I go by the product page and this is built really well. Most of the laptop is actually made out of metal and since it's a small and compact chassis there is hardly any flex. It is very sturdy and I was kind of surprised by it especially in this price segment. But yeah build quality is pretty good. There's a slight flex in the middle of the keyboard if you uh, press around the area of G or H very harshly. But apart from that nothing really exists. The form factor is something that I really like, like um, it is extremely thin, it is pretty light as well, it comes at around 1.3 kgs. It feels dense because of which and I actually it's reassuring for me and I like that fact. Also it has a considerably decently sized battery so that adds to the weight of it. Apart from that, uh, this is a 2-in-1 or a convertible as I would say, not a 2-in-1 because it does not detach. You can flip around the screen completely and use it in tablet mode. So that's something you have in addition with this particular form factor, which I think could be a point of attraction for a few people. I don't know a lot of people who use laptops in this particular form factor, apart from maybe consuming content. But yeah, since this is a two in one, it also has a touch screen and has touch input. And there is a pen included in the box. If you want to know what else is in the box, I made an unboxing video about six months ago. But yeah, overall, I feel the design and build quality is very premium and very reliable. I really like it, especially because it's mostly metal and that is something I appreciate. Alright, now let's talk about the display. Now this actually comes in a variety of display options. I believe in India there are not a lot of them left because on the HP website this particular model is unavailable but you can buy it on Amazon and the link of it will be mentioned in the description below. But I believe this particular screen goes up to 250 nits. Another thing is that it has a glossy uh, screen. Reflections could be a problem but it also does not cut down the display brightness as much which I faced a problem in the Zenbook 14 kind of because although that was around 250 or 300 nits it's seemed a bit dimmer compared to this one. Anyway, I really like the screen. The quality is really good. The LCD panel used is really good. And I think for content watching, this screen is really good. The bezels are very thin. The top bezel is a bit thick, but houses a webcam, thankfully, and which I feel is kind of necessary. I'll address the webcam and its quality in the later part of the video. But yeah, the bottom chin is a bit too much and could have been extended for a 16 by 10 or a wider aspect ratio, but Windows doesn't scale things very well as well. So I guess streamlined aspect ratios are good. But yeah, that's my only complaint with the particular screen. Also, one thing about the screen is that this is covered by Gorilla Glass. Now, this is according to the uh, product page. I don't know which Gorilla Glass it's covered by, but since it comes with a pen in the box and you 
have a pen input i think that's a good thing because the pen tip is actually plastic so obviously your screen will be sturdy and uh, pen input won't really give you scratches on the long run because plastic is way softer than acrylic glass Color accuracy is something I could not measure uh, because I don't have the right tools for it. There is no faded colors or something that looks less saturated. You can tune it up even more, but yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I don't think anybody will be dissatisfied, but I cannot recommend it for color critical work, to be honest, because I could not measure the accuracy of it or how well it could be tuned. As I mentioned around the display, it has a webcam. So here's a sample about the webcam. It also has a button to disable the webcam, but all right, so I'm recording it from the webcam of this particular laptop and the lighting conditions is exactly what you see in the video right now. So you can be a judge of it. I can see a lot of noise over here. The field of view is okay and the audio is being recorded by the internal microphone. So you guys let me know how you find the mic quality in this particular laptop as well. One more thing I actually missed out on mentioning is that this laptop has fingerprint authentication and it's integrated into Windows Hello but it does not have facial recognition because it lacks the IR sensors that are required along with the webcam to allow facial recognition for Windows Hello. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Back to the video. Touchscreen is another functionality of this laptop as I mentioned, but I think it's a personal preference. I'm not sure how many people would really look forward for a touchscreen in a Windows based machine. But if, it, if you are looking for it, this is a bonus and you can go for this one. All right, the pen is actually very well built. It's mostly plastic. It has a slide out door for a USB-C port, which can be used for charging. So this actually works like a Bluetooth pen as well because it has a couple of buttons and you can configure the input of it in an app that is pre-installed on the particular laptop as a HP software. And the ergonomics of the pen is actually very good, but the usage of it is something that I find questionable. Now, if you're just highlighting text or some things like that like on a pdf or a word file i think that's brilliant it will work out very well but if you're thinking for creative work or something that is something which i did not personally like as much mostly because the screen has a refresh rate of 60 hertz and the touch sampling rate is not that great so that's why uh, i am used to my samsung galaxy tab s7 plus which has a 120 hertz display and a 9 millisecond of a latency the latency of the pen to this particular display is a lot so that is why i feel like when you're in the flow and drawing some things it might not be the most convenient thing now let's talk about the speakers it has a decent pair of speakers actually um the, it gets pretty loud a stereo uh, separation is decent bass response is not great like almost every other windows laptop but yeah you can't really match the speakers of the macbooks unfortunately but yeah the speakers are loud enough and does not distort as well so that's a thumbs up because the chassis of this particular laptop is also pretty small and thin to fit speakers conveniently so i guess that's acceptable now the keyboard now the keyboard is something that i personally did not like as much it's not a bad keyboard by the way uh, there are a few things that i find that it should have uh, kept into consideration which it didn't one is the layout uh, the arrow keys is something that I do not like. I prefer the inverted T layout like on MacBooks or the Zenbook I covered a few months ago. Uh, the next thing is the fingerprint sensor. The fingerprint sensor is between the Alt button and the arrow keys. I don't get it. Other part is the row of home page down, page up uh, and uh, delete buttons which is there. The power button is not the rightmost button, so that's something a bit jarring. But I know that if you're used to this particular laptop, it won't cause you a lot of trouble. But somebody who's coming from another generic keyboard may take some time to get used to it. Now, this home page down, page up layout is something, you know, found on all HP laptops as per my knowledge. I do not really like it, but it's there. So if you're coming from an HP laptop, I don't think this would be a problem. Now, I am not a fan of the key response. I personally use a mechanical keyboard, so I'm used to, you know, tactile feedback, knowing that I have typed a particular letter or have pressed a particular key. In this case, the feedback is not much. But yeah, the keys are silent. So in professional environments or in a cafe or something that would be suitable. But there were times where I skipped letters where I thought I have pressed the key, but I didn't. The keys aren't bad. The feedback is something that I rely on, which was not always present. So I did miss out on a few letters leading to a few typos. So the keyboard overall is not my favorite. It has a consistent backlighting, which I really like a single color only. And it has two levels of brightness. The distribution is pretty good and uh, the backlighting is definitely a great thing to see in this keyboard.
The trackpad size I feel for the chassis size is pretty good. So since the vertical height wasn't that much, they made it a bit broader which actually helps in tracking. The tracking is pretty good. I'm not sure if this is a glass surface or not. The clicks are pretty uh, pronounced and obvious. It does not make a very horrible sound as well. The trackpad is something I really like. It's not that tall. That's the only problem I might see, but you can't really fit a bigger trackpad in this chassis in my opinion as well. All right, coming to the IO. Thin and light, so you expected limited IO, but I am happy that uh, there is a decent amount of IO in this actually. It actually has a 3.5 mm headphone jack, unlike the Zenbook I reviewed a while back. It has two USB A ports, which are USB 3.1. It has a USB C port, which is also USB 3.1 and supports PD charging. So I have used my PD chargers and the OnePlus warp charger as well to charge this particular laptop. It works pretty fine. The other thing you have is a barrel plug for charging. Now this is something I do not like. Why include a barrel plug where you have USB-C charging? Yes, it does open up another port to interact with but I feel it could have been used for something else or increase another USB-A maybe or add another USB-C instead. It also has a micro SD card. Now I don't know how many creators actually would prefer this, but yeah, you have it. I don't think it's very much useful. Now battery and charging. As I mentioned that it charges via both the barrel plug which is there on the laptop and the box actually comes with a 65 watt charger which has the barrel connector in it. But yes, you can charge it with the USB-C port via USB PD chargers. If you have 65 watt chargers, well and good, it should work very well. I feel the battery life is not a huge concern on this laptop. This has like a 52 or 55 watt hour battery. For this particular screen size, I think it's a good size because you can't really fit much more battery inside but yeah um, you do get around 10 to 12 hours of easy um, usage if you're doing web browsing online streaming and stuff like that but yes with heavy uh, tasks and in high performance mode it could take a bit more uh, battery up and but still you'll get at least seven to eight hours even during heavy sessions according to my testing a performance performance is something i really admire about this laptop few things i want to mention i did not open up this laptop because it's not mine the cooling system inside the laptop is pretty adequate one funny thing is that it has actually two vents over here but only one of them act as an air duct the other one is sealed off i don't know why i feel that should have been done to help it out overall the performance is really good now in the regular balance power mode there are no problems at all browsing scrolling and going through media and stuff is really great but in the high performance mode which you can go via the hp command center now that is something you should keep in mind because the fans kind of have a whine to it like if you're not using headphones or something i think it could get annoying on a longer period of time but yeah nothing to be worried about Another advantage I found for this laptop is because you usually keep laptops on a desk or on your lap, it could get hot and the bottom surface, although it has ducts for uh, taking in air, could get choked sometimes if you keep it on things like a bed or something. But uh, that's where I feel that the two in one factor actually acts to an advantage because if you're using a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse or something like that by chance or wired mouse and keyboard as well, you can just flip it over and you have a bigger and more open area for taking in air which actually helps in the cooling performance in my testing as well but yeah it never crossed 90 degrees so that's a great thing even in high performance mode one more thing i forgot to mention is the ssd speed this has a crazy fast ssd it is branded by samsung as per what i saw in crystal disk mark and the hardware monitors the read and write speeds as you can see is insanely fast and here are the cinebench r23 um, scores i was really impressed by it in a thin and light uh, chassis of this you know form factor i really admire the performance performance is something i did not really understand initially but as i use the laptop i was actually impressed by the performance so if that is your main agenda with the laptop i feel this is a great laptop to go with and the power packed inside this particular chassis is 
something really great i mean i wasn't expecting it to be honest and that's where the efficiency of the ryzen chips actually come into the picture because the u series of chips are you know usually up go up to 30 watts of power consumption that's what i saw in high performance mode otherwise it usually idles around 3 to 5 watts and that's amazing and that's why the battery life of this laptop is actually genuinely really good not just that, even in high performance mode, the battery life is pretty good compared to its Intel counterparts. So that's what I want to recommend. Now, people are asking me a lot of times, uh, hey Shreyas, should I go for 11th gen Intel or 10th gen Intel or the Ryzen, you know, U series or H series of chips. I have two things to say for this. Efficiency wise, performance wise and value for money wise, Ryzen chips are way ahead of Intel right now and probably will be for a while. There are multiple reasons for it, which I could discuss in another video but two reasons mainly which i see you could go for intel one is that if gaming is really important to you the xc graphics in included in intel is something that is way better than the integrated graphics in the amd cpus over here so that's reason number one number two is thunderbolt amd does not have official thunderbolt support although you can get charging as i mentioned and a 4k output from this particular uh, you know port as well but it is not thunderbolt and probably won't support both simultaneously so if you value thunderbolt and have peripherals including a thunderbolt ecosystem intel is something that time you should go for and not just you know prefer it but you should go for intel in that case so that's my opinion about the intel versus uh, amd ryzen right now it could change in the uh, coming future yeah overall i'm actually pretty happy with the laptop the only gripe i have personally is the keyboard like the layout, the feedback is something I'm not a huge fan about. Um, but yeah, I, I can totally get used to it. I'm just spoiled by my mechanical keyboard, I guess. But what do you guys think? Um, would you buy this particular laptop? And if you do plan on buying it, the links of it will be mentioned in the description below. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it about this particular laptop. Let me know how you found this video, drop a like maybe and subscribe to the channel if you like this. Ask your questions or doubts or suggestions or query about the laptop review I just made. So yeah, that's been it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.